Welcome to Lion and Blythe. And Blythe. Say that quite nicely, actually. Did I? Yeah, very gentle. <laughs> I'm, I'm a gentle kind of guy. Yeah, you keep telling yourself that. <laughs> so, um, should we let the folks out there know why um, we've decided to start this podcast? You tell them. It was your idea first. Well, you sort of, um, you hinted at it. You know what you like. You like to sort of, you know. I love a good podcast, yeah. And I do watch quite a lot of them. So I thought, you know, we're, I've, I've hinted a few times and it was your idea, but I put it in your, into your head, basically. You did. But, you did. Uh, so, yeah, we decided to do the podcast, didn't we? Because, um, well, we decided the podcast, we'd work together or obviously uh, myself and Aaron met um, several years ago and... More recently, as you'll be aware, we have put together his documentary, Heart of a Lion. And because of really the, the amount of messages and the feedback we've had on that, in terms of the mental health side, we decided, let's carry on off the back of it, didn't we? Mm, yeah, to be honest with you, I mean, as I've stated before, we, we, we're starting to get a bit of a following now. And... Um, you know, as I stated before, it wasn't an easy decision to go along with, especially when you're suffering it yourself. But now that it's all coming to an end and the documentary's finished and it's soon to be showing at the um, outdoor cinemas and screenings and that, it's um, it's definitely one thing you can look back now and it was uh, definitely a good decision to make. And from what I'm aware, it's helping a lot of people as well. So let's just go along with it now and see see what the outcome is, basically. So should we give that a plug? The uh, Outdoor Cinema Live? Yeah, go for it, yeah. So, Outdoor Cinema Live, can you remember the date, Aaron? It is the 13th, it's a Tuesday, right? <laughs> Tuesday the 13th of October. <laughs> <laughs> Never ask Aaron any dates. Yeah, yeah, so Tuesday the 13th of October, uh, Outdoor Cinema Live at Hemsby, which is near Great Yarmouth. And is it 7.30 it starts? 7.30, yeah. 7.30, uh, before Heart of a Lion, it's going to be um, the Nansa short documentary which is about 45 minutes which is called navigating the no new normal put my teeth in navigating the new normal and it's uh, an answer is a charity a local charity that um um supports children and adults with disabilities and it, it's based upon navigating covid and how they've had to manage that and deal with that both the people with disabilities and, and the families as well so yeah come along um Myself and Aaron will be there. I'm sure um, Aaron will be quite happy to tell selfies of himself. <laughs> well, that's why they're called selfies. Correct me if I'm wrong there, but you know. Yeah, but selfies love, of himself with nobody else. Love a good selfie. Love a good I selfie. Love a good selfie. So yeah, we're, that, that's, that's on on the 13th, but podcasts. So we've decided to put these podcasts on. We're going to run these, what? What have we said? Can't remember what we said now. What do we say? Once, what, one a month? One, two a month, we'll just play it by ear, you know. One or two a month. We've got what? two this week, so, you know, we'll just play it by ear and see how we get on. Yeah, yeah, it's there again. We're recording two this week, Aaron. We're recording two this week. We're recording two this yes. week, yeah, yeah. We're not live. We're not live, but we will go live. Will we? Yes, we will. 100%. I love a good live feed. You should know that by now. <laughs> I love a good live feed. So when, when we're going live, when we're going live then? Whenever I decide. We'll go live in a bit. Oh, God. Help me. So, yeah, podcasts are going to be coming along. Uh, we're planning to uh, get a few guests on the show, obviously. We've got a good, uh, good bunch of guests lined up, actually. What well, I'm quite excited about having them on, to be honest with you. Go on, then. Tell me about them. Tell me about them, because uh, well, I don't know what's happening. You haven't even told me. Well, first of all, we've got your friend in the first place, Simon. I can't say his name. Simon King. King. Go on. Fill me out. Don't make me look bad on this. Come on. Simon what? Kingsley. Simon Kingsley. No. It's not Simon Sim Kindly Signs. Kind, kind, what's it? What is it? Kindly Signs. Kindly Signs. I just know him as Simon anyway. You know what I mean? I, but yeah. Do, do you know what? Before you carry on, what's great about that is you said, my friend. I didn't know I'd got any friends. Well, I'm going to make you feel important on this show. Thanks, mate. Yeah. You, you carry on one. now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, so we've got car... Simon, Simon, Simon Kings, what's his name? <laughs> <laughs> Simon, 
Simon. We've got Simon coming on the show. Simon Kindly Sights. Kindly Sights. I'm sorry, Simon. We've got Simon Kindly Sights coming on the show. Um, he's going to be recorded with us this Saturday night. I've got to know a little bit about Simon, obviously, because he's having a documentary done by a Films, which is yourself and Mason and a few others. And obviously, I, I, I actually heard about Simon before I even got to know you again after all these years. So I knew what kind of thing he did in the first place. You know, uh, I seen him once in a coffee shop and one or two people said, that's the guy who did a marathon or something. And I was like, all right. He was like, yeah, but he's got no use of his legs. So I was like, okay. So straight away, I was quite intrigued. You know what I mean? And then when you said you knew him, yeah, and uh, I just thought, what a great guy to get on the show. And he's got a lot of good backing stories behind him. He's got yeah. a good background. You know, he's in the Guinness World Records this year. Um, you know, he's done marathons. Uh, not only just done marathons, but he's been the first of his kind to finish a marathon of the such marathons that he's done. Okay. You know what I mean? So, don't don't tell him all the story yet, though, will no, you? No, I won't. I'm going to save it for there. He did actually film me in, and I was going to write it all on Facebook, but I thought, no, you can tell him yourself. So I'm yeah, quite yeah, sensible yeah. when it comes to things like that. Yeah. But, yeah. So that's Simon. Who else? So I guess you've got... Uh, we've got Earl Ling. Uh, at some point, going to come on the show. It was another um, quite old name around Norfolk. He... Um, <laughs> He's an ex-professional boxer, he's an actor, he's been in quite a few films, um, he's a decent guy, you know, I got to know him uh, about a year, two years ago, got chatting to him, and we stayed in touch, and we, I actually train with him sometimes in the gym, and what a decent guy, you know, but he's got a good uh, history as such, you know, he's, he's got a good background, and yet again, he's exciting, he can talk to us about his acting career, and what it was like being a boxer, Earl Ling snapped his leg in half in a boxing match on his way down from a knockout the exact same way pretty much what i did with my leg when i was on the trampoline so it's going to be interesting for me to talk to him because obviously we can share what the feeling was like but you know it's is it, a top-notch guy he don't pull no punches and that's what i like about him is as real as the fucking come and yeah it's going to be amazing on there and then you got roy knight roy beavis okay before you tell me about roy go on yeah, I'm just intrigued. Yeah. Why have you got your mic in a bedside lamp? Good question, actually. <laughs> you know, um, to be honest with you, when you told me about this podcast, you said you're going to get all the setup and all the mics and you're ordering this, that and the other and that. And you come here and you've got the full setup and everything. And I've just got a mic on a table and I can't be asked to hold it. So I thought, well, fuck you. Here's what's around me. You see, sometimes in life, you've got to adapt. But you've also got to open your mindset you know what i mean it's not always about having these top-notch things sometimes you can just go along with the flow whatever works and right now this is working it's shining a light on my face it's getting my smiling when i like to smile because i love a good smile and i look good oh at least i think i do it's a good day today move on move on move on move on Oh, you want to know about Roy Knight now, do you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Roy <laughs> Knight. <laughs> yeah, we're also going to have Roy Knight on the show, um, also known as Roy Beavis, a professional wrestler, another friend of mine, which is why I'm managing to get him on the show. That's two friends he's got. <laughs> I'm, doing, I'm doing better than you, that's for sure. <laughs> but yeah, um, if you've seen the film Fighting With My Family to do with Paige from the WWE, it's her older brother. And obviously the um, the film sort of showed what it was like for him as he had a bit of a background coming out of prison, which I'm not really going to go on about now, uh, but I'm sure Roy don't mind me saying because it's in his book and everything. And I'm going to get him on this podcast show to talk about it. Uh, but either way, he's also one of the best professional wrestlers that this country has ever produced. And he's not had an easy run, but he doesn't mind talking about it either. And to be honest with you, the guys full of that many stories that I've heard him on the road, I want him to tell them on air. So, you know, he's a former world champion. Um, and yeah, he's he's doing really well for himself now. And uh, like I say, he's, he's another guy who's got a good uh, backing story to tell. Okay, so uh, we've got we've got Simon mm. and, and Earl and uh, Roy. Yep. Have we got anybody that's not a wrestler or a boxer? Yes, we've got a DJ coming. DJ, <laughs> DJ Charged. You know, if you've never heard of DJ Charged, look him up on Facebook, Charged Budcast. The guy's amazing. He kept everybody entertained on lockdown. He's got loads of followers now. He's 
I know of him through a friend, but I don't know him that well. But either way, the guy's fucking hilarious. You know what I mean? I've only got a... I watched a little clip of him today and I was in stitches, like proper in tears. Yeah. And I couldn't get my breath. So he's just going to be an amazing person to have on here. I will say this. When he comes on here, anything goes. You know what I mean? He ain't going to hold back. He's crazy. And that's why I want him on this show. So Okay. But obviously we'll have to do it, um, you know, COVID safe, won't we? <sighs> Whatever suits you. Yeah. Well, let's talk about this COVID. Yeah, yeah. So we, that's enough guests for the moment. We've got we, we, we've got more lined up, haven't we? We've got loads, yeah. But we don't want to give away at nah. the moment. So, yeah. Nah. Let's talk about this COVID then. What a crazy fucking year, 2020. Seriously. Yeah. I mean, wow. If you said to us this time last year that the whole country is going to be in lockdown, everybody's going to wear masks, you're going to have to stay indoors, you can't go out, you can get up to what is it, a £1,000 to a £10,000 fine or whatever it is for being out of your bubble or this and that. I mean, that sounds like Resident Evil. That's some crazy shit. Whatever Resident Evil is. Resident Evil was just one of the best games ever made for the PlayStation, mate. Oh, God. You're a bit He's too old, aren't you, to yeah, understand yeah. that, but you know. But yeah, it was, saying, all, uh, it was all ping pong. It was all conkers when you was a kid, wasn't it? Like, you know what I mean? Like, that was your entertainment, like, you know, colouring fucking conkers. But anyway, yeah, um, crazy. You know, I still can't get my head around it sometimes. You know, wearing masks. Well, it's probably a good thing for you, isn't it? I'm going to be as nice as I can on this. <laughs> but swivel. Anyway. Um, yeah. What a crazy year. And you know what? I don't know what to believe. I do not seriously know what to believe. As you know, you get all these different rumours come out, you mm, know. Mm. Everybody's entitled to their beliefs. I'll never, never, you know, go against anybody for their beliefs and make a big scene of it. I know what I think, but yet again, everybody's different. You know. Okay, then, so Boris, doing yeah. a good job? Bad no. job? No. Half a job? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not saying. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. You know what I mean? It, who knows? You know, he comes on the telly. He he seems like a nice guy, but at the same time, okay. He's thinking he's a haircut. Yeah. Do you think that's yeah. more important? Yeah, but the guy's probably had more women than I've ever had. So let's you know give the guy oh. a bit of credit. <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, I, I don't know. You know what I mean? It's. Thing is, these days, you can say who you like and people fall out with you straight away just because you like somebody that their opinion is an arsehole. You know what I mean? I'm not saying Boris is an arsehole, nothing like that. I like, you know, the guy's done some pretty decent stuff. It's just when it comes to this COVID, something's got to make sense of me into something for me to believe in. And when time passes and I'm watching and I'm reading and I'm seeing this and hearing that and one thing's contradicting this and the other thing's contradicting that, I can't make sense of it is when I start questioning things. You know what I mean? And when you've got people telling you certain things on the telly, yet you've got other things being let out that don't seem to sort of connect with what the media's telling you. Yeah. It does, you know, I'm just being honest. I'm not trying to cause anything there's a lot of people out there that's going to be like well it's got to be real because x y and z and they might be right i might be wrong i'm not saying that i am right but i'm saying i don't believe everything that's being fed and you know that's for that's me media yeah yeah well for me um i don't know if you remember about the um do you remember all the the publicity about the uh uh the hospitals i forgot what they're called now the ones that were coming out um, oh, you mean in um, London? Yeah, no, the, the extra hospitals that were, that yeah, were being... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't yeah. remember the call. I can't remember, but I know uh, Nightingale Hospitals, that was it. Yeah, 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 yeah so yeah. Nightingale Hospitals. There was a lot of, you know, wasn't there stuff coming out about that? Mm. What happened to them? I haven't heard anything since, have you? Apparently, well, I don't know. I haven't been keeping up to date with that one as such, but so, ended it. So what happened know, to them? Well, apparently they didn't get used, did they? So that's one of the things. What, what else? Do you remember the, Do you remember all the... You know, this app's... Well, I mean, the app's supposedly out. Another app's out now. But they mm. had all this stuff saying, oh, this app's going to be, going to be the best since sliced bread. Mm. For me, it seems that they keep saying these things and then these Id various ideas. And then oh. when it doesn't work or it's not used, no. we don't hear any more. And it just seems to be brushed under the carpet. It's it's like um, 
I'm aware of some small businesses in terms of these, they've called these bounce back loans. I don't know if you know about the bounce back loans. No, never heard of them. Yeah, he's not really into sort of that sort of thing, are you? So no. bounce back loans for small businesses that perhaps have been affected by COVID. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. yeah. I oh. call them small business so that's been yeah. affected by uh, COVID loans. Yeah, but go on. So um, there's a lot of, I mean, I'm in the same situation myself. I run my own business. I've applied for a bounce back loan. Yeah. All I'm told is you're in a queue. Yeah. You're in a queue. Yeah, we've got your details. We'll let you know when um, when we've got some more information. Yeah. So when you see on the telly that they're saying, oh, well, we're going to bring this in. It, you know, for me, it's just, they say at this level, this is going to happen. But when the devil's in the detail, it's... Phew. It just doesn't make sense. No. None of it makes sense. And this is it. I think a lot of people's getting to a stage now where, you know, nothing is making sense to other people. And it's just making people think, hang on a minute. You know, I mean, we all know. I mean, I'll admit, hands down, at first, when it all went off, I believed in it because straight away I was just listening to what is being fed to you. But, I mean, they, they can argue it out and say they didn't know much about it at first and that, but like I said, you know, when it all first come out, they said they knew that it takes two weeks to get into your system or something. You know, once you get COVID, it takes two weeks to affect you. And then, uh, and then you know, the numbers start going down of cases and things like that. And then you get all these protesters and everything, you know, 90 plus thousand people all standing together, riots, people going on the beaches, having parties, you know, two months later, the case has just gone down to nothing. And all of a sudden, when it's like a season where the flu spikes anyway, it seems to be flowing up. But if you look at the statistics of the people that's actually losing lives over it, it seems to be flat as anything. So the cases are there, but the deaths aren't. And it's like, so what makes this different to the first time? You, do, do you know? Do, do you know what I'm getting at? It, I, I, just... I, I understand what you're getting at. Um, I don't. I mean, I don't know the answer to that, and I'm sure that's plenty of questions that people ask. I mean, it could be that um, that you know people that have had it are more immune to it. It mm. could be that um, the way the lockdowns worked is that it's more young people that are catching it now, so they're obviously don't tend to be more so vulnerable and the systems in place is more testing it could be those things i'm you know i'm, I'm not you no, know it's no, just of course it's um it's one of those things but... like i say at the end of the day the way i say it, everybody's entitled to an opinion yeah you know yeah. It's, we're supposed to have freedom of speech it's not always the case these days you know as we know time goes on things change but everybody's entitled to opinion I'm not going to be an idiot about it. I'm not going to be a dickhead about it. But at the end of the day, I'm going to say what I think. We talk about things. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's wrong. I just can't make sense of it. And when I can't make sense of something, like I've just said, I can't grasp anything. You know, I'm just like, I don't believe in certain things. You know what I mean? Maybe I will. Okay. In time. I don't know. Time tells, doesn't it? You know what I mean? So yeah. we're just stuck in a bubble at the minute, literally. And it's just like, well, we'll just see what happens now. Sit back and see what happens. But... Let's see what happens, yeah. yeah. That's probably enough about COVID. So let's go yeah. on to something lighter then. Mm. Okay. Quite an important subject. Yep. Um, what are your favourite sweets? Oh, now we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> Retro sweets. Uh, oh, take me back to the nighters any day. Oh, so my, my favourites have got to be refreshers. And guys, we want to, you know, if people have got their favourite sweets, we'd like to hear, wouldn't we? It's very important, this. Yeah, Yeah, research, course. yeah. For refreshers and drumsticks, it's got to do it for me. Drumsticks? Yeah, I remember drum. Yeah, of course I remember drumsticks. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know what? My favourite of all time is toffee bonbons. Toffee bonbons. Just, just yeah. plain white, simple toffee bonbons. Nice. You know what I mean? I don't like the lemon ones, the cherry ones, nothing like that. It's got to be pure, one hundred percent white toffee bonbons. I was, I was from up north, mate. So we, we didn't have anything as posh as that. Did you not? No. Yeah, you had a bit of a rough uh, upbringing, didn't you? Really? Yeah, yeah. So, you know um, I mean? yeah, because I know you, 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 you say grass as well, don't you? Grass. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, well, that's important. That's how you say it. Grass. Yeah, yeah, all these people that say grass, mate. There's no R in it. Only at the start, then towards the end. So why would you say grass? It's grass. Uh, well, I think like it's glass. grass. Apparently, yeah, a glass. Not glass. <laughs> glass. It's always a debate, this, isn't it? Whenever it gets brought up, you it know is. What I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. You know, oh, I don't know. But I'm. Um, um, it's, it's a long ass. vowel. How do you say ass? Ass. Yeah, but if it's a double S, how would you say it? Ass. Exactly. If it's arse, A-R-S-E, yeah, how would you yeah, say yeah. it? Yeah, it's important. So why it's... glass and glass? Yeah, we're, we're, you know, we, we were brought proper, weren't we? Proper, mate. You proper. know what I mean? Yeah, we didn't fuck about. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> we, we said it how it was, mate. <laughs> no, the glass. Stick your glass up your arse. You know what I mean? Glass. 
Yeah, we um, we need to educate people, don't we? Hopefully, we'll educate people on these podcasts. You see, hopefully, hopefully. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, you can get a degree in uh, Lion and Blythe podcasts. We might be able to offer that out. What a degree? Yeah, a degree in Lion and Blythe podcasts. Okay, who's teaching? Um, well, not you, obviously. I'm gonna say <laughs> I won't leave that one to me if I was you. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody hell! <laughs> Cause chaos. But um, so anyway, um, just one thing. Mm. Um, do you think you ought to take your hat back to the shop? Why? What's wrong with it? It's broke. It's um, there's something wrong with it, mate. Because the peak um, is at the back rather than the front. That's nineties, mate. <laughs> I ain't going out of that era. Let's let's talk about. You know, you're talking about sweets. Yeah. You know, before you try and insult me anymore, let's talk about like going back to the nineties. You know, I, I've had this conversation no end of times. Eighties, nineties, the best era, best eras before everything went tits up. Yeah. And when yeah. I say before everything went tits up, we're talking about before social media took over our lives. Now, I mean, this is a touchy, you know, touchy subject, but it's reality. It is. We live in a fake world half the time now. That you know, what I'm trying to say is the seventies, the eighties, the nineties, till maybe just the early thousands, maybe, but mainly them three decades and that that I know of, you know. There was no media about like this today, socially. Social media, there's no mm. this. I mean, let's face it, people today are stuck on phones all the time. It's half the day's gone on a phone, half their life and People live for like Instagram likes and Facebook likes and, you know, and you see things on these social media um, outlets and things like that or whatever it might be. And it's all a virtual world where none of that existed in the 70s, 80s and 90s. You but know. but we, we still want people to like us on social media, don't we? And follow us. On this, of course. But if I'm honest, mate, I hate it. I hate it. And, you know, I'm guilty of it. I'm guilty, 100%. I'm guilty of it. I'll sit there and I'll be on my phone and people are trying to talk to me. And literally, I would, like, look away. I'm like, oh, sorry, what, what's what been said? You know, the yeah, interaction yeah, yeah. goes down, doesn't it? Because we're so focused on these stupid little gadgets. Where, don't get me wrong, they have, their, they have the good things about them. You know what I mean? Keeping in touch with people. And it's easier with a lot of friends and that. But everything's done on a on some form of computer now, everything. We're, we're losing, I feel as though we're losing a decent way of life. You know what I mean? Like I was talking with my mum the other day, my old dear, and I was saying, you know, when we was kids, you know, when I was a kid, like, it would be a treat for the day if you got up, your mum or your dad would say, I'm going to treat you to one of your toys today, whatever. Back in my day, it was Ninja Turtle figures or whatever. You get the bus, you know, you, you travel into town you're excited you know you used to probably go mcdonald's if you got an extra treat where back in the day mcdonald's for a kid was a treat you know you went to mcdonald's it was a big thing i Today, remember the first one when my back home time yeah that's what i mean it was it was massive you know yeah, if you yeah. want to get a happy meal kids would be over the moon they told the friends i'm going to mcdonald's today and there was all you know it was a big thing for kids back then where today i mean i take my ass on to mcdonald's he expects to go every day it's just a norm now where Early on in the nineties and things like that, it, it was a big treat. And not only that, you're going to go into the city or into town or whatever after your meal, and then your mum or your dad or whatever take you into Woolworths. Which Woolworths, nothing was better than Woolworths back in the day. You know, you could find anything you want in Woolworths. You know, I miss that shop. Like, could you oh, find a girlfriend in Woolworths? You could find anything in Woolworths. Could mate. You? Yeah, anything. Is that where I went wrong? Yeah, you just didn't shop at Woolworths. <laughs> yeah, it was well worth it. But what I'm saying is like. You know, you go there, you get your toy, you, you get the bus back and you run home and it's like all the kids come running, which one did you get? And I, yeah, I got this one. And like, whoa, man. And everybody's all playing around in this. It was a fun day in itself to do something that's so small today, but back then it was something big. But nowadays you get anything with just a click of a button and it takes a whole adventure out of it. So what I'm saying is like my kids, sometimes it's like, oh, I want this toy. And you'll pick up your phone and within 10 Five minutes, you've gone on Amazon, click, okay, it's paid, it'll be here tomorrow, bang. Well, where's the adventure of that? Yeah. And this is what's been taken away, I personally think, from what we once knew as a fun reality to a world where it's just shit. <laughs> and that's the way I can say it. I sound like an old man moaning, but at the end of the day... Sounds like, you sound worse than I do. I, I, see, I, I, I get what you're saying. I, I don't necessarily have that opinion, because if you think back, let's think back, I don't know, I don't really know, I'm 
probably surmise in here, but mm. you know, when our parents were brought up and, oh. and stuff and when they were little, mm. you know, it's probably quite a big thing to have a telly. Just have one telly in the house yeah, or video right. a VHS recorder or whatever. Four channels, so, five at tops, yeah. So it might be, their parents were probably saying Oh, well, it wasn't right, you know, before we had this telly. You're always in watching telly, you know, out yeah, doing yeah, right. this. So, mm. it, uh, I don't know. Things move on, mate, don't they? They do. And, you know, I, I remember my dad saying when I was a kid, like, you kids don't know you're born today. And I said, <laughs> no, you're saying kids. the same no, thing. I'm saying the same things to my kids. Yeah, I get frustrated. I say, like, you kids don't know you're born. Why, Dad? What was it like in your day? And then I'm talking along, and all of a sudden, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm sounding like my dad every day. You know what I mean? But, yeah. I'm not guilty of that. Even though I'm older than you, mate, I'm probably less guilty of that. Really? Yeah, I'll prop Sam's because I'm down with the kids, you see. You're down with the kids, are you? Yeah, I'm down with the kids. Proper virtual, rock on. Right, you well, know what I mean? I Fortnite know. and all that shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty good at Fortnite. Actually. Are you really? I've had one go on it once, mate. No, no, yeah. I'm not very good at that. I'm not very good at that. But No, I did have a go against one of my son's friends' dads online, and both the kids were just laughing. Yeah, you, you had a go with one of your son's friends' dads, cousins, brothers niece's uh son no just the son's dad oh, right, you know okay. but that <laughs> you, you know you're talking on headsets and it's like get your dad to go against my dad and all that so i thought go on and have a go and i was playing and they're both kids just laughing at us like well it beats having a scrap doesn't it i think i'd rather have a scrap if I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> you know but yeah again you know it's, I, I remember i remember when we were kids we used to line a load of kids up i mean do you know the term council estate kids yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? It was totally different to what it is today, you know. Yeah. Back then, council, to, to be a council estate kid was like a downgrade. Like, uh, not even a downgrade, but sort of like, um, you know, you had your proper wealthy people, had the houses, and there was rich and a bit more upper class. And then you had the rough council estate kids, you know, back in the 80s, 90s, whatever, uh, even the 70s. But it was, this, it was a different way of life. There was loads of kids on one street, you know what I mean? About three, four kids to an house, and it was all like. I mean, I remember the street I grew up on in Chapel St. Leonard's, mm. Skagness, and the whole street was just full of kids. There were about 30 kids on that street. And, and that was just from two two households, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But no, you say that, but you know, I remember like one, one family and that who I was friends with, and there was about seven kids in the house, all oh, sharing man. like three bedrooms and stuff like that. But that was just one house. And when you got like. 30, 40 houses like that and pretty much every house is full of kids. Mm. You can imagine what it was like and we used to, we used to get up in the mornings, first thing in the morning, you get a knock at your door if a bunch of kids is, you know, is having come on out to play and all that and you go out to play and before you know it, there's about 40 kids on the street causing chaos and, you know, we used to play like uh, some crazy shit really. Well, when you say crazy shit, we was, we was naughty little kids really, you know what I mean? Like, picking a winner with a football, booting it at someone's win and then doing a runner and stuff like that. Where, to be honest with you, if I saw my kids do that today, I'd be like, what are you doing? Like, but we was little shit. <laughs> you know, I could tell you loads of stories on that, but we'll get back to that another time. But when you say the fighting thing, we used to do that all the time. We were kids with boxing gloves on, you know, we used mm -hmm. to line up all on the wall outside the park and they'll pick two kids and we'd have a scrap till one of them's nose got frigging broke or started crying or this and that. I, I remember going home crying to my mum a couple of times. I've been in the nose. Why, what you been doing? I was boxing with all the kids. Kids just shut fucking mouth and get back out there and play. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was a bit tougher. Yeah. You know, so, and that's only going back 30 years. But then I heard the stories of my old man's day and he told me what it was like. I can imagine it being even a lot rougher than then. So, yeah, take me back any day. Well, I don't know. We got to move with we got to move with the times, haven't we? I remember mad ball at school and you know conkers at school. You can't have conkers now, can you? At school, I don't no, know. No. All that sort of thing. And um, it's yeah. all. I think health and safety has gone a bit crazy now, though, hasn't it? Come on. Yeah. yeah you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. We don't want to bore people with that, though, do we? No, no, no. I mean, that's probably one of the most boring subjects ever. You know? Yeah. If could you imagine health... being a health and safety officer? <sighs> Get a life. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You know, I come home today. How's yeah. work, baby? Well, yeah, well, I did the cleaning and this, and I made sure this were checked and that. And it's like, seriously, yeah. well, I can't live like that. No disrespect to health and safety officers. I respect what you do, but pipe down. Give us a, give us a bit of life back. You know what I mean? You know. Yeah. Okay, no, seriously. Right. Anyway, on a serious note, coming back, sort of. 
back full circle again. I am being serious. Life is fucked. <laughs> <laughs> on a serious note. So um, I think there's been, uh, I don't know if you're aware, but on the news there's been a little, quite a bit of stuff on mental health week, men's mental health. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and obviously we, I know we've come back to full circle to the documentary, which mm. covered quite a bit of mental health side. Mm. And um, um, like yourself, you know, I've s suffered probably not the right word, but I've, I've had to sort of deal with it from time to time. We all have, have mental health in different ways, don't we? Yeah, it's suffering, you know. It's, it's, it's traumatising. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's nothing nice. You, you're dealing with it. It's not a nice thing to deal with. You, you suffer with it. That's just how it is. Black and white, let's be honest. Yeah. It's, you know. So, I mean, uh, for me, um, you know, uh, we'll go back to the documentary, you know, it's about putting that message out there that mm. it can, you know, anybody can be affected by it. Yeah. And I think... The first step, I don't know for you, but the first step for me was to sort of basically accept that this is something that is part of my life. Yeah. Um, and that I think that's the first step. And then the second step is sort of finding that help. Would you say that's? Definitely. You know, um, that's that's something that th 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 this, this is a big issue in mental health today, especially with men. You know, I mean, women, it's always been there for women. They'll chat, won't they? Ladies will chat to yeah, each other. Yeah, of course they will. And yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I mean, women go through so many changes, you know, more than, I guess, men do uh, with the bodies and the hormones and things like that, you know. Um, men testosterone levels and that, just get testosterone, they're angry and this and that and the other next minute, you know, it's just... Um, but what I'm saying is, like, men feel as though it's weak to speak and that's just saying how it is, you know. But that's the way people have been brought up these days. Like, like I say, you know, going back, things were a lot tougher. Things were different. But... The thing is, this is what I mean. People think that they are looked down upon if they show weakness. But the thing is, we're only human beings at the end of the day. You know what I mean? And that's what people tend to forget. You know, I'm, I'm not being funny. People seeing the documentary, you know, I've, to, I've faced some pretty fucked up things head on. And, you know, I've, I've been scared a lot mm. but I've always had that go in me to do it you know what I mean whether it's you know uh, forcing myself to succeed in something or whatever it might be if a bodybuilding or even if I'm just in a scrap in the street which I've had quite a few growing up and that but like you know what I mean I've always had that go but nothing is weak about that kind of thing but when it comes to mental health all of a sudden everybody curdles in and it's like nah you, you got to speak about this stuff mate you know what i mean because i've seen people pass away or so i'll be honest suicide i've known a few people commit suicide and that's down to mental health and it breaks my heart if i'm being honest with you um and this is what i mean you know it it's it's tough i mean um um obviously you know but um i was i was a police officer for what, 12, 13 years? Yeah. And I went to a few suicides. Yeah. One particularly I remember was just a young lad, 21, 22. Yeah. Took his own life uh, with a shotgun, which will stay with me forever. Yeah, I bet, yeah. Um, and over, you know, over a, over a, um, a relationship and... You know, if it, there are lots of list different triggers, aren't there? And I think um, it's identifying those mm. and having a support network. Yeah, yeah. Whether it's that family or whether you know whether you get sort of professional care. I think professional care is it's a bit it's not postcode always, lottery, it, isn't it, it? it? It's not always great. I'm I'm just going to say how it is, mate. You know, I, I'm going to give an example. The other day, my mate was t talking about it, um, and he was saying you know, like he he went to speak to the doctors and they said, right, we'll put your referral. And it says it's going to take three months to get you to see them. Well, I'm not being funny, mate. If you're in that mindset in three months, it's a long time. You know, the, 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 this is where the problem is. Yeah. You know what I mean? It takes three months to see someone and yet you're thinking about committing suicide. No, you need to see people now. And to be honest with you, I'm going to be honest, these doctors and that didn't do absolutely jack for me. It was friends. It was people that cared about me, that encouraged me to, you know, being around me every day to make sure I didn't do something stupid. You know what I mean? Filling my head and inspirational people talking to me and things like that. Doctors didn't do nothing. I'll be honest with you, medication didn't do nothing for me. Um, that only made me drowsy. 
one of them my education made me put two stone on, which then made me more depressed because I was putting unwanted weight on. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying it doesn't work. To some people it might help, some people it might work, but to me it made me worse. So the best thing I did personally was get myself active again, get myself out there, meeting people, seeing people, trying to set little goals, accomplishing things all the time. And that gets me focused. But as soon as you take these little goals away and these, you know, uh, beliefs in yourself and these little challenges, should I say, you know, that, you know, it can be a lonely place. You've got nothing to aim for. So it's kind of like just an existence, you know what I mean? And that can bring you down. I personally believe. Yeah, I mean, there's not an easy solution, is there? You know, yeah. and, and you know, there's not one one size fits all. No. Um, so, I mean, certainly the message we'd like to put out is that, well, from my point of view, and I'm sure Alan will agree with that, is that um, just speak to someone, speak to somebody close to. Don't be scared. Don't be afraid to sort of speak out. Don't be afraid to break down. I know I've done it, and I know Aaron's done it. Just speak to someone. That's the first step. I think once you do that, and once you sort of accept it. You have to then manage it. You never get rid of it necessarily, because no, it no. depends on the individuals. But I think you just have to manage it. And you just, mm. I think, the more aware you are, then it's like having an injury, really, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, a physical yeah. injury. If you got a physical injury, you go down the gym. You know, it's like if you got a physical injury, you manage your work around it, don't you? Yeah, of course you do. Yeah. So it's it's a bit like that, and you just got to accept sometimes it's going to come back. You know, yeah. I'll, I'll admit, you know, I've been doing really well this last year or so, but you know, this this week I've been hit pretty hard. You know what I mean? A few things got thrown in my face and it really shook me, you know, took me off guard sort of thing. It's, mm. I, I've had a down week, but you, you just got to be, try and be as positive as you can. And the, the truth is, and I know this now, I know this now through going through it all before, it doesn't last. You might think it's going to, but time's a healer and that is just truth. But also you've got to train your brain as well. Yeah. So it doesn't last or it doesn't last? Last. <laughs> <laughs> But um, on a lighter note, <clears throat> yeah, you know it's a it's a touchy subject, but you know what I mean. It's um, it needs to be addressed more and more, and I think people are starting to speak more. And uh, you know, I just hope people do find the heart in it in 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 the fight in them to actually speak. And let's have less suicides because yeah. So guys, let's reach out, especially uh, if you know any guys out there, mm. friends or whatever. Reach out to your mates. Don't be afraid. You know, show a bit of compassion. And it's important. Um, okay, we're gonna, how about, okay, let's make it sort of, bring it around a bit. How's your week been? What's your week? I know you've not had a great week, but mm. last couple of weeks. Tell me something positive about the last couple of weeks, mate, and I'll tell you about mine. Uh, you know what? Things are good, in a way. You know, I can't moan. I've got a roof over my head. I've got my health. That's the main thing. So I try and look as positive as I can, you know what I mean? I'm doing things, you know, I'm writing a book. I've got a book I'm writing. Um, quick plug there. Yeah, quick plug. <laughs> Hopefully to get out by February. Uh, involved in another film and um, obviously the documentary coming out and obviously talks going back in the ring. Um, and you missed something. Line and Bluff. Podcast, of course, Podcast, mate. Podcast, of course. You know, we're going yeah, to be come doing... On. Yeah, this is something, hopefully, you know, we're going to get people on here and just talk about random shit. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, it is. yeah. The thing is with this, we're not planning nothing to talk I've about I've got Elvis nothing. booked. Elvis is booked. Is he really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? He's, he's, he's coming back down from somewhere. Is he? Elvis is coming on. Yeah. I never did think he died, you know. Did you not? No, no. not after I watched Men in Black. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just thought he's gone home. But um, I thought he got on the moon after I'd seen him in uh, what was it Sunday Sport? Was it Sunday Sport? The one where know. he was seen supposedly. But what, but what a legend! What a what a king! You know what I mean? Like the king of rock and roll. You know, I mean everybody's got a good uh, a favorite Elvis track. Even if you don't like him, there's one or two tracks you'll like of Elvis. You know what I mean? I was yeah. named after Elvis, believe it or not. I was. Were you? Elvis Alan Presley, yeah. Were you really? Yeah, my mum's a massive Elvis fan and she named Elvis. me Alan after his middle Aaron name. Presley. How cool is that? <laughs> yeah. It's funny yeah. how you brought that one up, funny enough. But then, yeah, and then, yeah, mate, Michael Jackson is another one. You know, you'll never get another king of pop like him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you've had a good, reasonable week then. Reasonable week. So the stuff's coming out. Lion and Blythe, we've got, we've got running. I'm, um, what have I done this week? Well, I've been busy. I'm obviously working on various documentaries 
Yeah, you're doing quite a few of them at the minute, aren't you? I you're am, yeah, yeah. You're getting so a bit of a reputation now, aren't you, since doing Heart of a Lion? You know, oh, right, Eight Turn Films are the... Yeah, I think I've gave you a bit of a boost, mate. You know, let, let's be uh, honest. You know, I have this all the Eight time. Eight Turn Films were fuck all until you came to me, and now all of a sudden you're taking the line, like, let's be honest. You know what I mean? Like, you know. Yeah. But uh, It's like welcome. when we were setting up tonight, yeah? yeah? Setting up tonight, Aaron thinks, oh, yeah, it took five minutes. Hey, what's the show called? Lion and Blythe. Well, yeah. so you're at the start. Who's number one? Who's at yeah. the start? See, do you know, yeah, we had no, this conversation, no, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, We had this conversation. I said, <laughs> and, and I just thought, well, it's just not worth the hassle, even <laughs> though even though I'm sort of, you know, the one that, you know, I'm the you're brain. the bitch that sets everything up while <laughs> I sit with my, with my feet up and have a coffee, like, you know. Even though I'm the brains <laughs> behind the... Uh, uh, behind the partnership, um, I just let him, you know. You think, are the brains. You well, are the I'll, brains. I'll, I'll give you that. Yeah. Oh, thanks, mate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you need brains in this sort of thing, you know. Oh, I don't know about that. I, I, do, I do all right. So, yeah. <clears throat> Documentaries I'm working on then. Do you mind if I tell them? No, go for it. Tell them. Talk about it. So, I've, I've, I've just finished. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've just finished one. It's about some bloody wrestler, some some has been. Yeah. Uh, you Pop might have heard of it. Heart, Heart of a Line. Yeah. 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 Apparently he's a bit yeah, of an like arsehole, but... Shit documentary, don't watch it. Yeah. <laughs> so I've just finished I'll that. I'll save you an hour and a half. <laughs> uh, um, obviously, uh, we mentioned Simon Kindly signs that I'm doing, I've been following for a little while, so um, I'm going to be working on that for a, a bit. But that's actually, I'm going to be, because there's been no obvious end date to that, I'm going to be turning that into a sort of series. And you've actually done the Nancy documentary, right? Yeah, I did the Nancy documentary, that, yeah. yeah. that's that, which is going to be shown at Heart of a Lion. It's going to be shown there, at uh, Heart of a Lion. Heart, heart of a Do you mean it's going to be shown at the outdoor cinema live? Hey, or at Heart of a Line? What are you on about? Well, you're make you're saying that it's it's being shown at Heart of a Lion at the outdoor cinema live. Yeah. So what's the what's the what's the location? Is it just Heart of a Lion? Is that is that like? Yeah, that's the location. Heart of a Lion. <laughs> Google it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm doing that one, and um, uh, what else? Oh, then I'm I'm doing one. A guy called uh, Nick Elliott is a rock photographer, and surprise for you. Yeah, he's going to probably come on the podcast for us. Is he really? Yeah, I mean, Nick's been in the business for donkey's years. He's um, yeah, you've told me about him before. He's shown me. Yeah, he looks pretty pretty smart. He's a cool. He's a cool dude, isn't he? He's yeah. a cool dude. So uh, look forward to getting Nick on here. Mm. He's uh, he's an old bard, and yeah, he's such a cool dude. Some of the statements he comes out with just make me laugh. He's uh, yeah. He's, That's what we need, don't we? We need a bit of jazz in this. You know yes. what I mean? Like this is the first one. This is just introducing who, who we are. So. For one minute, let me ask you this. Let's get this out there, right? So, Andy, your your next police officer. What did you do before that? What did I do before I was in the police? Yeah. I was uh, I was in the air force before that. So you're in the air force. So you've got a kind of military background. Sort of. That's awesome. So why'd you leave that? To join the police. Really? Yeah. So I I joined the air force at. Um, I couldn't. Uh, do you know why I joined the air force, mate? Right. Uh, uh, in all truth, when I was at school, I wanted. To, I was just into my sport. My sport, I was good at. I was a good sportsman. Football, right? <clears throat> Football, basketball, yeah. loads of sport. Yeah. 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 And uh, I joined the air force because I was struggling to get a job at the time, and I wanted to do. I wanted to do something with sport, and, and I thought, oh, they do lots of sport in the in the forces. I'll join the forces. So I went in the air force then, uh, and I tried for the police when I was young, but they didn't take me then, and then. Um, that's when I got into the police at 24. 24. That's yeah. pretty cool. Well, I'm going to ask you something now, because something I've always wondered. You know when they put the blue flashing lights on and they're whipping around? Yeah. Do they sometimes do that to just get to a location quicker just for the sake of it? You know, like they just want to meet for coffee or something <laughs> like that. You know, heavy traffic and they think, you know, sod this, put the lights on and away they go. We move out the way thinking there's emergency going on. They're just literally making their way to a fucking coffee shop. Does that ever happen? Honestly? Yeah, honestly. In my experience, never seen that happen. Honestly. Really? You're looking at me as though you don't believe me. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> yeah, on, on, I, but I can tell you funny stories. What used to happen is... Go on then. <clears throat> before we had sat nav, so you imagine trying to find somewhere before we... Have, I mean, now they'll probably have put a location that comes yeah, into the computer in the, yeah, in the police car away, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But when obviously when I was in, I was in 1980... No, 1994 to 2005. Right. So... Um, Used to, uh, it used to come in, location, come over the radio, and it'd be an emergency, an A grade, as they called it, and I'd sort of set off in the general direction. Right. And then I think, oh, shit, I don't know where I'm going. Or I don't even know exactly where it is. So I'd turn my blue lights off, pull over to one side, have a look at it on the map, then pull back out again and go. Really? <laughs> but wow. you, imagine with that technology, if you, that's why it was important then for to have local police knowledge. But Yeah, 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 yeah. sure. And, and, and I did... I uh, I used to work at Ely and um, we had some plain police cars there, just some old escorts. Yeah, and yeah. 
I used to look after a proactive team playing clothes mm. and we used to go out and then we had a little blue light in the in the footwell a little blue light you could stick on top a bit like the old Sweeney yeah popular like yeah, the old yeah, style yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. and we used to go out and do a bit of proactive stuff stick that on when we needed to stop someone because we couldn't just stop them in a, an ordinary car right. and do that but they stopped us doing that it's, it became too politically correct you, mate you speak about these blue lights I'm going to tell you a little little story if you want. Uh, it's my second car I had a Ford Escort and yeah. I used to have a gear stick and he used to press it and it was blue flashing gear stick and that and I've done it many a times and you know what I swear it worked pretty much every <laughs> time I was on the back roads there's a car in front of me and it's a one way back road sort of thing I used to turn it on and cars would pull over and i just whiz past them it was like one of the coolest things I ever had in a car you know what I mean so yeah blue flashing lights going off in a car people think it's a car but pull up realise it's just a gear stick or whatever it might be yeah so I can imagine you had fun with them sort of things oh do you know what mate I, I, I uh, you know, um, I mean, I was professional when I did it, um, but you, it was a great feeling when you, you go into an A-grade job or you go into yeah, a fast yeah. job and you put that blue line and, and the car's part. I loved it. Oh, loved adrenaline. It. Yeah, adrenaline. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, if I miss anything, I miss that adrenaline rush. Yeah. I mean, I've never been a policeman, but I've been like security, work with security dog units and things like that, you know, and we we, we used to have similar sort of thing. we get a, a call on our phones and whatever, and we'll get... Um, you know, can you get to this site quick? It's yeah, kicking yeah. off. And then you've got seven vans buzzing down there with dog units and things like that. So kind of similar, I can imagine. But yeah, the adrenaline, you know, getting there fast, getting out, getting... Yeah, I can imagine. I'll, t I'll tell you a funny story, okay? Well, this is a true story. True yeah. story. Because um, I used to quite... I, I quite like chasing after people as well. That, that used to get the adrenaline flowing. Yeah. You know, I'm not a big guy. Obviously. I'm usually the one that got chased after. <laughs> <laughs> So I was in, um, I don't know, it was near Ely somewhere and I was chasing after this guy and I thought, oh, it, was, it was pitch black and I thought, oh, he's going over these fences and I'm climbing over these fences and I thought, I don't know where the fuck he is. Yeah. So I, I, I'd heard of someone else trying this, so I shouted, stop or I'll release the dog. <laughs> 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 Mate, that dogs don't fuck about, I tell you. <laughs> so funnily enough, he stopped. <laughs> and cowered in a corner <laughs> but I didn't have a dog get like a little Jack Russell coming out <laughs> great yeah. so yeah yeah that's um... oh mate I used to love training with dogs it's one of the best jobs I've ever had you know uh, German Shepherds um, mainly German Shepherds but the Dobermans and obviously I had little Charles Spaniels sniffer dogs and all that I used to do all the training with them in the daytime and stuff and then we'll be on with them at night and that was one of the coolest jobs I ever had I only did it for about two years but yeah that was called Crofts wasn't it the what Crofts yeah yeah 100 <laughs> percent yeah but no it's um <laughs> no it was good it was good fun it, I really enjoyed it you know and it's um yeah it definitely brings back a few good memories in that line of work God, you know you saw a couple of nasty things you didn't want to see now and again but that's yeah. what the dogs were trained to do especially when they're massive kickoffs and that especially when you get a guy attacking you mm. or you know going mental and the dog's got to do its job and that it's sad but that's you know that's what they get trained for isn't it you know what I mean they're like police dogs basically and you know from what I've seen it's just if you're having a bit of trouble and you see dogs get out of the car, just calm down a bit. <laughs> There's a word of advice. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll know about it. But yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. But I've moved on. Obviously, I've moved on since then. Mm. Started doing filmmaking about... Um, went to uni and did my um, my master's in film film and TV production about sort of three or four years ago. Yeah, you've been in a couple of films, haven't you? Mm, yeah, yeah. I've, I've been in a couple of films that I've been had the scenes cut out of. Have you really? You've told me this before. What go on? What was it? So I had a scene in um, in Star Wars. It was Star Wars. Um, yeah. Rogue One. Oh, okay, yeah. So I had a scene in there. I played a character from the original 1977 film. So they were bringing them back as such, or that was the idea. Right. Han Solo. No. No. <laughs> Chewbacca. <laughs> no, it was uh, General Tag was the character. All right. And uh, I had a line in in Star Wars, and it got cut. What was the line? Uh, this Sith Lord will be our undoing. Yeah, can you say how you said it in the film to me? No, I can't remember. <laughs> this, <laughs> this Sith Lord will be our undoing. Yeah, I can see why I left that out. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, fair play. Well, that's pretty cool, though. You know, it's so, yeah. a shame they didn't use it. You know. And uh, I think the first first bit of extra job I did was uh, when I did some extra work was uh, I was a 
I was a beef eater in the Muppets movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're fitting well with that one, Muppet. <laughs> yeah, Muppet. <laughs> yeah, give him that job. <laughs> yeah, and that scene got cut as well. I think they're trying to tell me something, mate. Yeah, I'd give up your acting career, mate, if I was you. <laughs> but do you know what? Like, obviously, I've done a bit of acting. You have, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, it's funny you say that, but today, uh, a film I did, what, six years ago, Dawning of the Dead. Yeah. And that, that's actually just been released today, or I think it's today or yesterday, on Amazon Prime, free to watch now. Yeah. So a lot of my mates have been messaging me saying, look what I'm watching, finally get to see it and that, you know, because it got a DVD release. Yeah. Um, but I don't think it did in the UK. I don't know. You know, don't and know. to be honest, when I've done a film, I don't really, I've done it then. I don't really, you know, yeah, once I've seen it once, I don't really he buy d- it. He does, and he gets, what he does, he gets his DVDs and he puts them in the TV and he's watching it. I come, I come back and he's play reverse yeah, yeah pause yeah, right. pause selfie with himself on, 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 on <laughs> i've the... done a couple of them actually so uh, uh, you yeah. see on my instagram yeah I, there's one or two like that so you know it's just sharing the love isn't it you know what I mean? sharing <laughs> the love anyway how, how uh, um how's the dts for what the dts 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 yeah what's see it? this is this is it this week we can get Aaron. yeah because uh, what's the dt dt when you get the shakes or you get the withdrawal do you know what dts are Withdrawal from what? Withdrawal from not being on social media or not going live. Well, right, you've said it now. <laughs> yeah. What's the DTs? I'll show you what DTs is, right. Yeah, so what, what are you doing now then? I'm going live, mate. What are you going live on? Because we're nearly finished, you know. We, we, we haven't got much longer to go. I've, you know, I've got to... Uh, it, my bedtime's at 10, remember, at my age. 51 now. Yeah, you've got to put your piss bag on as well, yeah. Yeah, I've got, yeah, I've got to make sure I've... Yeah, thanks, mate. Oh, I don't know what's going off here. <laughs> you can't really work it, can you? Oh, this See? is what I mean. This is what I mean. It's all this modern technology crap. That sometimes it messes up. And yeah. Do you want me to get you an abacus? No. Do you know what an abacus is? No, I don't want to know either. <laughs> Look at that. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I don't care. Going live on podcast. Do you know podcast what? Podcast week. Do you know what an abacus is? What? A what? An abacus. No. I'm going to get you every week with something. Why? So an abacus is just like a counting thing, like little little um, balls on a on a sort of wire. And yeah, you, yeah, I know that's an abacus. Yeah, yeah, we had them at school. Yeah, well, I didn't go to school that much. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> no, I didn't. No, believe it or not, I was a bit of a bit of a rebel oh, yeah. back in the school days. Yeah, I used to turn up, and uh, I'm not saying that's a good thing. But I used to turn up. Actually, I'm just telling you, we're going live, literally. You know, we've got a whole setup here with the cameras and everything. But I thought I'd go live, give people a little bit of a taster. But yeah, them, what do they call them? Abacus. 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 Yeah, I remember at school. Yeah. yeah. Nope. But I, like, like I was saying, you know, I used to uh, get off the school bus and... Sort of thing I used when I was at school, mate. Because I was obviously at school that long ago. <sighs> no comment. <laughs> so what year were you born? 1985. 1985. 1985, Retro mate. years, mate. Yeah, yeah, I was, um, I was just about leaving school then. Wow, you are old, aren't you? Yeah. I, uh, I'm the same age as uh, when man supposedly got on the moon. Who was the first man on the moon? What what, what year was it? Let's, let's ask you that question. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Here we I'm go. I'm quite okay. good with history, but it wasn't... Oh, okay, so 1960... Oh, for goodness sake, do it you is. not really know that? 1969. See, so I was two years off, come on, you know what I mean? I've read that many <laughs> books and different things and Listen, that. I can't keep, you, I love a good read, by the way. Yeah, yeah, but still read. still wrong, mate, two years out. Oh, two okay, years when, out. Did, when did, when did um, England win the World Cup? 1960, I'm not a massive football fan, but <laughs> 1968. Two dates you should really 1968. know. 1966. 19, yeah, of course it was 1966. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. God, I, I'm not a massive football fan. But it, you know what? That is the only sport I don't like is football. I hate it. Okay. I don't mind watching the World Cup when it's on. You know, I'll get behind it. England are playing, blah, blah, blah. I'll, I'll have a good crack, but I'm not massive. For, boxing. I love my boxing. I love my boxing. Yeah. And yeah, I can't wait for it to probably get back on the telly. But which brings it to it, Yusek and um, Chisora's just been signed up now to fight, haven't they? They're fighting next month. I don't know much about boxing, mate. You, oh, you're freaking useless, you are. Sorry, man. Well, you should watch stuff like that, you know. But uh, might boost your testosterone, you know what I mean? <laughs> Instead of watching all this pansy shit you're into. <laughs> what, Teletubbies? Teletubbies, yeah. But, um, yeah, no, I'm looking forward to 
getting a bit of normality back with the sports and that, you know. Mind you, saying that, like, I usually watch all the big fights, all the big boxing fights and that, you know. I'll go around my mates and they'll get on the big screen, they'll have had beers and takeaways and stuff like that, as you do, and I miss all that. And, you know, we haven't had much of it lately. We had the big Dylan White fight not so long ago, and that ended a bit... I didn't want it to, you know what I mean? But I uh, feel sorry for him, really. Are you live now? Yeah. Yeah, well, I wonder what they think of your lamp. I bet they love it. What do you think of his lamp? <laughs> That's all you're getting. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Oh, you finished? Yeah. He finished, he's finished going live then. That yeah, was a quick one. Well. Yeah, I don't want to give him too much. No. But, um, yeah, that's... yeah, I just can't wait to get a bit of normality back. <laughs> whenever that's going to be, you know what I mean? So anyway, so you got into acting and here you are now. Here I am now. You know, so yeah. what's the plan for you now then? What, what, <coughs> what, what is it? What's your, have you got any future plans or are you just taking each day as it comes or what? Take each day as it comes, I think. Best way, best way. Yeah. Sometimes I think you can think too far ahead, can't you? Yeah. Um, do things I want to do. Hmm. That's how you should live your life. Do things you want to do. That's if, if there's any advice to give to somebody is don't let people say you can't do something. No. Just do it. You're better off trying something and failing than not try, trying at all. There's a saying, all right, a professional wrestler, once again, Jake the Snake Roberts. Everybody knows Jake the Snake yeah. is, you know, from the 80s and 90s and that. And there's, there's one quote he always said, and that always stuck in my mind from a young kid. It says, some try and fail, others fail to try. And I'd rather just fail now and I give things a go. You know what I mean? I, I don't want to get to the end of my life and just think, what if? You know what I mean? Life's too short, isn't it? Life is too short. You know, look how quick this last five years has gone since we first met. Five, six, seven years even. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's just gone like that. And so much changes. You know, look how many different changes we've gone through since that time. You know what I mean? You can't take anything for granted now. So I just think, go and do it, you know. <laughs> So on that mo on that point then, shall we um, shall we end the podcast and um, you can say your message to camera of what you'd like to um, what wisdom you'd like to give How to long our have audience. Been doing this for? We've been doing it for an hour now. Shit, an hour. We said an hour. Can you do me one favour? What's that? Because right, this is reality. We ain't pulling punches here. Can you just swear once? I have I have swore. You haven't swore once on this. Podcast. I have. Look, if um, just say it. Yeah. What? Say fuck. Fuck. Okay, well done. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering when that was. Well done. I'm proud of you. Yeah, yeah. You well, I, did, I, I think um, you missed. I've said it about two or three times. Have you really? Yeah, but okay. um, I was my, just that intrigued in what you were saying. My, my vocabulary is, uh, you know, it's a bit more than swearing on occasion. But you know, if you you know if you want to bring yourself down to that level, mate, that's fine. Yeah, I think I will. I'll yeah, stick yeah. there. I so, quite like it. What's, what's your wisdom for the week then? What's your wisdom to the listeners out there? Come on. Like I say, you know, this is it now. This is a podcast we're going to be doing. And, uh, you know, this is just the first one, just a little taster. Just me and Andy letting you know a bit of what we've done. Um, a lot of people do know what I've done. I've been a professional wrestler for the last 18 years. Obviously done a bit of acting, been a doorman, bar work, this and that, the other. That'll all come out over time. But, um, you know, I'm looking forward to getting this going a bit more better and getting some serious laughters on this show, especially with some of the characters we're going to have on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm really looking forward to it, as a matter of fact, and especially Charged, you know, he's, he's <laughs> the one I'm like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have beers ready for him when he's on here and I'm going to drink with him while we do this podcast and if it lasts two hours, three hours, it's going to last that and uh, it's just going to be a laugh with him. I can't I wait. I think the cameras him. will run out by then. Yeah, but you know. All the batteries. I shouldn't say it, but he's the one I'm looking forward to having on air the most. Mate, the, the guy's insane. Oh, that's nice to the other guests then, isn't it? Yeah, no, I look, the other <laughs> guests are nice, but I'm just saying this guy, you just never know what you're going to get out of his mouth. And I can't wait to talk to him. And obviously he's brought up in, uh, you know, like I say, in that retro era. And he DJ, uh, DJ'd all these old school, like, um, what do you call them? Uh, drum and bass and all yeah, this yeah. and that. You know, the, guy, the guy's had some experience in life and I look forward to getting him on it. I really do. He's going to be a right laugh. And, um, yeah, yeah. So, anyway, you know, stay real, stay cool. You know what I mean? And like we've said all along, anything you want to do, just crack on and do it. If you want to get on this podcast, and like I said, we will have beers on the podcast. We're going to have, obviously, a few little challenges. I've got a whole massive pot of different chilies. We're going to have chicken wings, and we're going to get literally off our nut just on chilies till we're sweating and we can't talk. Anything you can think of, we're going to do. Um, well, and you're going to do. Oh, you're going to do it as well. I'm going to get you jumping out of a plane with us. 
There is you, no you way. Do, you there is no way I'm jumping down. out of a plane. You've got to, mate. You've okay. got to. Yeah, for charity. Yeah. We do out for charity. I, I, I can't jump out of a plane. You, you're going to jump out of a plane. He don't like heights. He don't like heights. <laughs> but I tell you what. I tell you what. He does not like heights. But what I'm going to say is, we get as many people together to sponsor this man. And when I say he don't like heights, he is petrified. I'm I not mean, doing it. I'm petrified. not. Do, do not do I this want to me. To get him to jump do out not do this to me because I'm not doing it. You've got to. do I'm it. not doing it. I can't, oh, mate. If I show you what we're doing it for, listen, mate. I, I get. I get panicky watching people do exactly. it exactly that's why so, it's going to uh, make it more of, fun you know um <laughs> stick me some snakes in here some spiders yeah but heights i hate i hate spiders yeah you know, well, that is one of my biggest fears but i'll tell you what if it was for something really good indeed i'd hold a tarantula i'll probably cack myself doing it but i'll do it no well, well if no well if i think if you're going to do that then you'll have to have a tarantula on your face oh uh, yeah i'll do yeah mate, you've, got, I, you, you've got to kiss it or it'll be crawling all over me anyway. No, well, if, I'll put a tarantula front. on my face if you jump out of a plane. Well, I'm not jumping out of a plane. You're going to jump out of a plane. Right, anyway, we I'm need to... I'm going to pay for it and you're going to have to do it because otherwise it's going to cost me 300 quid and that's... You're not well, that's, let you'll waste be wasting your quid. money then, won't you? No. Because I'm not doing it. We'll get it. people doing it. We'll, we'll find a decent thing to sponsor it for and we'll get you sponsored. We'll I am get... not jumping out. Right, anyway, we need to move <laughs> on because I'm not jumping out of a plane. Okay, yeah, he's jumping out of a plane. I'm not. But... Um, well, what I'd like to say is, yeah, come on, guys, listen to keep keep listening to this podcast, share it, um, be positive. Don't let anybody tell you that you, you know that you can't do something. Just do it. Yeah. And um, like Aaron says, if uh, if you think you got something to contribute to the podcast, mm. get in touch. Mm. Or you think you know someone who might have something to contribute, get in touch. Yeah. And um, yeah. Let's help build this little community up and um, get some good messages out there. Yeah, and I'm just going to leave it on this one. And I'm going to say this because there's a lot of people I talk to, obviously with a Heart of a Lion documentary coming out, people reach out to us all the time, especially with mental health and everything. And one thing I'm going to say right this now, I'm going to say this now, it doesn't matter what good you do in life for yourself or for other people, you're going to get people that love you. Even if you're doing something bad, people are going to love you. You know what I mean? And when I say bad, I don't mean bad, bad. But what I'm saying, you know, people will love you. But you will always get people that hate you. And it doesn't matter what you do in life, how good you're doing, what you do for others. You're always going to get the haters out there. Bless them. Don't let it bother you. You're always going to get it. That tends to bring a lot of people down, caring what people think about them. Yeah. That is one of the big issues as well. Biggest thing I've started to realize is fuck what they think. The right people will love you for what you are, what you're doing. So with that, focus on you, no one else, get yourself right and do right by others. And them that hate you or the haters as they call them, bless them. Because you, you need them. There you go. Okay, so this has been a podcast by... Lion. And Blythe. And Blythe. And Lion. And Blythe. <laughs> Lion. You always have to finish, don't you? Okay. Go on. See you later, guys. Yeah, take care. Bye. <laughs>